Redemption, the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. It's an interesting story beat that is used in a lot of stories to redeem a character that may have done wrong. Some characters become incredibly likable once they go through redemption, but I want to hone in on one character in particular, Omni-Man, otherwise known as Nolan. This video will also contain spoilers for season one and two of Invincible, so please, if you haven't caught up on the series yet, or you still haven't watched the show, it's currently streaming over on Amazon Prime, I would highly, highly recommend going to catch up on the series. Now, I've covered villains on the channel before with my Homelander video, but I would like to further the discussion by tackling the subject of redeeming a villain. Pursuing a story beat like this can turn your villain into an incredibly likeable character. I'm going to be exploring a little bit of Nolan's life through various scenes from the show and pinpoint important moments where I think he started changing. But I should probably do a quick rundown of his past. You left a girl in your room while you flew off to deal with a crisis. Mm -hmm. Nolan was born into the Viltrumite Empire when it was starting to expand across the galaxy, and Nolan explains Viltrumite as being the greatest empire in the galaxy, which gives you an understanding of his motives. When Nolan was old enough, he joined the war effort of expanding the Viltrum Empire, and was eventually tasked with going to Earth to take over and welcome Earth into the Viltrum Empire. A couple of things to note here. Nolan, of course, didn't take over Earth right away. He settled down and had his son Mark, thus giving birth to a number of Viltrumite on Earth, which is smart because then there are two of them to take over Earth, and Nolan even explains that Viltrumite's plans to expand across the galaxy was stretching their numbers thin. I think this is why he chose to have Mark, because that way it would mean taking over Earth would be so much easier for him. So with Nolan starting a life on Earth and having a son, he knew that Mark would one day maybe gain Viltrum powers, and decided to settle down till then, joining the Guardians of the Globe, saving others on Earth, but most importantly, buying time until Mark got his powers, and while waiting, would try and build a healthy relationship with his son. So when it did come time to take over, he would be able to get his son on his side and have almost no resistance from Earth. I think this is why we see him in episode one kill all the Guardians, because he knows that they would put up a fight, and they did manage to actually deal damage to him. So it was incredibly smart of Nolan to take them out before Mark could get even stronger, because could you imagine if the Guardians were alive when Nolan tried to convince his son of taking over, and Mark rebelled? It would then be Invincible and the Guardians all dogpiling on Omni-Man, and it's hard to determine if Nolan would have been able to take them all on. He probably would have been, but it's still that possible risk of him dying and failing his mission. Throughout season one, the show explores this murder mystery, where the characters are trying to figure out who killed the Guardians. Of course, we know it was Nolan, but the characters don't, so for us, the viewers, it's more of a why? And for my first clip, I would like to focus on the scene that Nolan has with Debbie. This is when she finally puts all the pieces together and figures out that Nolan was the one to murder the Guardians. Of course, she's rightfully upset and confused, and she even tries to talk to Nolan about why he did it, even giving the benefit of the doubt chalking it up to mind control while being forced into that position. But Nolan dismisses all of this and confirms he was pretty much in full control when killing the Guardians, but won't give her a reason why. So again, we as the viewers are baffled as to why he would take out the Guardians. We even see Nolan's caring side in the scene, trying to calm her down and attempting to gain her trust, but she would continue to get angry and kick him out. Just the fact that he shows restraint in this scene and chooses not to kill her shows that he is swaying from the Viltrumite cold, because I feel like if you were to replace Nolan with any other Viltrumite, they would have not only killed Debbie right on the spot, but they would have taken over the planet regardless of what anybody said. I will say though, that even though Nolan chose restraint in the scene, it doesn't make him any less scary. He's honestly terrifying on screen, and having the talented J.K. Simmons voicing him really just makes his character pop out from the rest of the cast. Let's now take the scene where Nolan finally confronts Mark about the truth, and tries to convince Mark to join his side, the Viltrumite side. He feels as if he needs Mark, because by this point, not only has he built this relationship with his son, but he does genuinely care for Mark, and has that pride of being a father. So when Mark does reject his offer, he is honestly upset, which is why I think he lashes out at Mark as much much as he does, mercilessly fighting his son to near death, forcing Mark to watch civilians die, all while lecturing his son about how he feels towards Earth. He just can't understand why Mark would possibly turn against him, and I think this choice was one of the main factors that led Omni-Man down the road of redemption. Nolan, of course, still tries to convince Mark to join him, stating that he will live hundreds, thousands of years in fact, and in the end have no one, but Mark rebuttals this argument by saying that he would still have him his dad. I still have you. 
And wow, what a powerful line, absolutely throwing Omni-Man's ideology out of the window. Nolan up to this point fought for the motivation of expanding Viltrumite, but with Mark pushing his motivation of family onto Nolan, it completely forces him to question everything he fights for. Because the truth is, he doesn't actually have anyone who understands him. He's all alone. I'm sure he has his own race Viltrum and may have some friends, but Debbie and Mark are family, and having to pick between family and his home completely breaks him. So he leaves Earth. Dad? Nolan would drift through the vastness of space, empty, lost, and unknowing of who he even is anymore. But once again, he's completely alone. And we get this beautiful sequence of him flying through the endlessness of space, visiting planets and pondering for some time, eventually finding himself on the event horizon of a black hole. And he starts to let go, fully accepting his fate. Before Nolan could be sucked up into the black hole, however, he sees this burst of light in the corner of his eye. Investigating further, he would find a ship of aliens who were falling into this black hole and he performs another heroic act, choosing to save the Fraxons from death. He would get them back to their home planet and would soon settle down there, choosing to start another family and have his second son, Oliver. It's incredibly lucky that no one came across the Fraxon ship. I mean, this guy was literally about to get spaghettified, but in seeing others in danger, he couldn't help but save them. And anyone who has seen the most recent episode of Invincible would know that Anissa basically confirms that Viltrums do want to save others. I mean, I'm not sure how true this is yet, but we'll find out in the future, I'm sure. With Nolan now having a new reason to live, he once again finds himself living with the ideology of family, basically confirming that he chooses family over Viltrumites. I was lost when I left Earth. I found these people. I saved lives. It was like I had a purpose again. I once again go back to the meaning of redemption, the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. I think we can pretty much confirm that Nolan is going down the road of redemption. The words Mark said back on Earth really shattered Nolan's beliefs, and starting a new life on Fraxon gave him the purpose of family. He would blackmail Mark into coming to Fraxon in order to speak with him and tell him about Oliver, his younger brother. Of course, we know Viltrumites do show up, which would force Nolan and Mark to fight, with Nolan getting injured and being captured. But again, Nolan fighting against his race just goes to show that he's heading down the road of redemption and trying to amend for the evil he did throughout his lifetime. Since Nolan is still alive as well, I imagine we'll be seeing more of him in the near future, and he'll probably fight alongside Earth to defend against Viltrumites, since at the moment, I don't think Mark really stands a chance alone against the Viltrumites, with Anissa absolutely curb stomping him in the most recent episode. Family ended up playing a massive part in Nolan's redemption. In superhero media, I think the theme of family always comes back Back into play, and even a show like Invincible, which is incredibly unique, still follows the principle of family and sacrificing your own self-interest for those you love. From my understanding as well, Nolan's redemption in the comics was very different from how it's portrayed in the show. And if I had to say, I do prefer the show's route, because it doesn't diminish that Nolan was once a conqueror. Instead, it confronts that and dares to challenge it, turning him into the man he is today. I honestly absolutely adore this show, from its world building to its characters. It's just a breath of fresh air on the superhero genre, and I'm glad we get to experience this show. The last episode of season two airs this week, and I can't wait to see the finale, but otherwise, consider watching this video next, Internet Stranger, and if I don't see you again, I hope you have a good day. Pine Tree, logging off.